grew up in New York City and my parents had a friend who lived in Greenwich Village who was a sculptor. And on Saturdays I used to go down to his brownstone apartment and he taught me how to work in metal, how to chisel in wood, and how to work in clay. Uh, never knowing that this was a very famous sculptor, I went down there and enjoyed being with this gentleman. Today this brownstone is now a museum that houses his work and the man's name is Chaim Gross. At any rate, I loved working in clay. Uh, you can feel the figures taking shape. You can, uh, you, it just gives you much more satisfaction uh, for me uh, to form the figures that I like to do than uh, any other medium. And I like to do contemporary figures of people. I particularly like to work with two figures at a time because then I not only have the movement of, uh, uh, of the piece or the person that I'm working on, but I have an interaction between two figures. Lately I've been working on dancers. I go to the University of Arizona School of Dance and I watch all the performances, I go to the rehearsals, I go to the shows, and I there's so much feeling and movement and sensuality uh, in dance that it's been a really wonderful thing for me to experience and to put uh, together into clay and then cast them into bronze. I'm fortunate that I live on a piece of property that was originally a horse ranch. Uh, although I don't have horses, I still have the corrals and the stables. And I call this place the W Ranch. And I took two of the stables and made it into a studio where I do my work so that I can walk out the kitchen door, walk across a brick walkway, and I'm into my studio. new piece that I just started of two dancers and you can see the armature and the wire in here because every piece that you make when you make it in clay you can't hold an arm out because it's not going to hold up so there's wire running through everything to hold all of this thing and you start to uh, make the bodies and then make them come to life so we're just starting to put this piece together and uh, got to move a couple of the arms around yet a little bit to get the power of the dance, the feeling uh, of how they're interacting. The, this arm will probably have to come closer down here, like like he's he's. This will be the man, so we're going to want to make him a little stronger, and he's going to be tipped. Oh, I can't really do that. He'll be tipped a little more like that, and a little more power over the woman in the dance. Every now and then I'll make a piece of sculpture and for whatever reason an idea comes to mind for a poem. And I like to incorporate the poem into the piece of sculpture. So this is a particularly long poem and it starts up here, it's expressions and it goes down around and it's the poem. And I actually put the words into the clay and then they become a permanent part of the mold. And uh, I do this very meticulously with a sculpt, with a not a sculpture tool, but with a dental tool, and uh, and I have to pick out all the little pieces of clay in there so it's very legible and you can read it. And I have a lot of fun doing that. What kind of advice would I give a sculptor, somebody who wanted to become a sculptor, is first of all find another career because you're not going to make a lot of money being a sculptor. But if that passion is burning inside of you and you have to do it, you have to create, allow yourself to feel the, the pieces that you're going to do, whether it's an animal or a person or, or a modern piece. It, sculpture creates a certain kind of power and, and you have to feel it and you want to make sure that you can it, Put that into the piece that you're creating. If people look at my figures and they don't see anything and they don't feel anything, then I haven't succeeded in what I wanted to do. 
It, it's important to convey what you as the sculptor feel inside so that the people viewing it can relate to that and understand what it is you wanted to do. Uh, and that's, that's what you need to accomplish. So it, I've been doing this forever, it seems. Uh, I'm 70 years old and I've been doing it since I was 11 or 12. That's a long time.